a very good morning to all of you so we would be talking about data interpretation and data and governance in this session now these are some of the very very important topics and moreover the seventh unit of your new syllabus has a new edition of data and governance in the last june exam we had seen you had at least two to three questions that were part of the data and governance and a reduced number of questions in some of the papers which was seen for the data interpretation so it's very important that you cover not only the data interpretation but also data and governance for this unit so let's begin with the very first question and we have the questions here from doorstep tutor so if you have any doubts uh, you can just uh, put those as clarifications as well so you have the very first question that is there uh, looking for the very first answer uh, the first answer for this question so how do you proceed so let's understand how do you proceed for this question uh, Radhika has the first answer here and Radhika says the answer is what D okay so uh, let me wait for a couple of few more answers before I proceed now let's understand you have a table where you have marks in science that is given and the number of students that are given now read the question the language of the question very very carefully the question says how many of the students are able to uh, pass in the science if they have the passing marks 50 out of 100 so 50 is the passing mark so everyone who is above 50 would be falling in this category okay so when i say everyone who is above 50 would be falling in this category what i would simply do is i can add up all those or i can simply say 50 minus 8 that brings it 42 and you have the lot of right answers that were already here so i was just waiting if i say this and you have the wrong answers that come in and as i did you had a lot of an answers that were wrong that also uh, came in okay so the idea here is you have to understand what is the passing marks and based on the passing marks you would say all of those who are able to secure 50 and above would be the right answer so you have 10 to 4 all those would be counted here and since i am counting all those uh, you would have been uh, understanding the concept okay Uh, the next year uh, what we are trying to understand is the next question uh, where we would be focusing on similar aspects okay but the similar aspects here would be uh, much more related to understanding the basics of uh, I would say uh, the data interpretation mainly in the tabular form so you have the next question that is up, up here i'll give you a while before you come up with the answers so just to let you solve the questions for a while now this is again a similar kind of question where you would have the similar kind of uh, concept that would come up but here the language is a little difficult uh, find the number of students who have scored at most 70 marks so what does this language means is important in itself okay so uh, you already have the answer here a lot of you with the answer right so the question since says find the number of students who have scored at most 70 means up to 70 would be counted so i would include 8 plus 10 plus 15 as my right option and that would be the number of students that would be counted i hope that's clear okay so a lot of you already with the answer those who have the doubt i would repeat again the question says at most 70 that means maximum marks that you can get are 70 marks so you would proceed from all those which are less than 70 maximum would be 70 anything more than 70 would be not part of this answer uh, the next question is a surprise question looking for the first correct answer so be very careful for this question you have a 
बार ग्राफ वेर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रॉफिट एंड द टर्न ओवर द ब्लू लाइन इंडिकेट्स द प्रॉफिट एंड द ब्लैक लाइन इंडिकेट्स द ब्लैक बार इंडिकेट्स द टर्न ओवर द क्वेश्चन से इज कैलकुलेट द परसेंटेज इंक्रीज इन द टर्न ओवर इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड फोर कंपेयर टू द ईयर टू थाउजेंड एंड वन सो हाउ डू यू प्रोसीड हियर यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द परसेंटेज इंक्रीज इन द टर्न ओवर so i already have the answers um uh, mostly in husain has a question regarding geography so those would be addressed in the classes on geography still if you have uh, uh, any doubts any questions uh, feel free to post the request at admin@examrace.com and i'll look uh, i'll just go through those okay so a lot of answers coming in now the correct answer is b so who, there were a lot of b so whosoever was the first with the b answer uh, has won this but the idea is uh, let's understand this question so you have a increase in the turnover now this turnover starts from 2001 till 2004 in 2001 the black line was somewhere about here so it was let's say 300 and in 2004 that was here in between 400 and 5 600 so it's 500 so what would be the increase that would be 500 minus 300 divided by uh, 300 okay so that's the base here so now how do i solve it it would be 200 divided by 300 into 100 and that's basically given in 1000 uh, in 1000 rupees okay so i have the value as 1000 rupees so whatever comes in but uh, it's immaterial whatever the unit is because ultimately you have the choices in percentage so you solve it so it's 20 by 3 so 3 3 za uh, you have 3 6 za you have 18 so you would have again 2 that would be left and so it would be 66.66 in a kind of uh, recurring series i hope that's clear okay so let's move on to the next question next question is again a interesting question uh, what you have to do is you have four persons and uh, four papers each of the person is appearing for but some of the persons have attempted only three of the papers they were absent in some of the papers now how the question says which candidate has secured highest percentage in the paper appeared so how do you calculate that I'll give you a while to come up to the answers for this question. Uh, yes, logical fallacy. We already have the question. Uh, we have the video, so you can just uh, go back to the channel and search formal fallacies. And those who are already qualified with NET and are appearing for uh, JRF or for their PhD, there was a lot of request for PhD. Uh, how to write a PhD or synopsis writing? So we would be covering those in the upcoming videos. So definitely uh, be with us for the upcoming videos. Now, before I proceed further, I have lot of answers, but a lot of incorrect. Correct answers as well. Now here, what has uh, to be taken into account is which candidate has secured highest percent in the papers appeared. So what I need to understand is only in the papers appeared. So let's say for Z, if I am adding, it would be seventy two plus seventy six plus sixty eight divided by not four by three. Because we are calculating only the papers appeared. Similarly, I'll find it for uh, Y, which would be seventy four plus seventy one plus sixty five divided by three. Here it would be fifty nine plus forty three plus fifty one divided by three, so that is definitely less. And here it would be sixty plus eighty one plus forty five plus fifty five divided by four, because he appeared in all the four subjects. Now I would find out the percentage for all of those, and from this calculation, I would see which of those have the highest percentage. and uh, those with the highest percentage would be the right answer okay so you can just calculate those and find out the answer so this was a pretty simple way of calculating okay so uh, now from the same table there could be another question find out the candidate who secured highest percentage in 
the examination across all papers okay so in that case you would not consider the papers appeared since it's specifically mentioned papers appeared in that case you will take only papers appeared but in the case where you have uh, all the information that is given across you would find out uh, what is the actual values that is appearing so you would divide it rather than three you would use four in that case so be very careful about the language of the question i repeat again if it is highest percentage in the papers appeared so some of those are appearing in only three papers so you would divide it by three but if it is the highest percentage across all uh, papers or across the examination you would divide it by four and that's very very important important to note the next question is a pie graph now this pie graph you have the present population which is 7 billion you have to find out how many people live in europe and africa combined so you have the proportion of europe which is 11 and africa which is 15 now this is a kind of very simple question what you would have to do is you would have to do 11 plus 15 which is 26 so i just add those and 26 now i have to find out this 26 percent of what 7 billion so i find out 26 percent of 7 billion and this would be my right answer so 26 percent of 7 billion comes out to be my right answer i hope that's clear uh, this was a kind of very simple question on pi graph and of recent we have seen that most of the questions are direct and that's how you solve those usually you have either the change the percentage change that is seen okay Uh, the next question is from the data and governance section. Now, all these questions, the next five questions we would be talking about would be from data and governance. As I said, this is a new topic and therefore very, very important for you to understand. So the first question here is which of these classification techniques generally make use of a manual effort? So looking for the right answer. So Radhika has the right answer. Great. So it's always user who use, who makes use of a manual effort. Okay. Uh, now all those who are from uh, the students from Jammu and Kashmir uh, who recently have got their connections back. We can definitely, uh, those who are not yet part of the course and want to enroll, they can uh, check out the classes that we have already covered as the recorded classes. Okay. The next question here is. The question again related to data. So data should be classified as what when unauthorized disclosure of the data could cause a significant level of risk to any institution or organization. So in that case, how do we ex explain the data? So Radhika has an answer back. Neha again with the right answer. So great. So that is what is a restricted uh, use. So when I say I am, uh, there, there can be a kind of sensitive information that is there, which could be uh, disclosed to the public in an unauthorized, uh, illegitimate fashion. Then we have a restricted classification of the data. Mainly when the data pertains to the security, the national security, we are talking about uh, the uh, the developments mainly in the terms of uh, the IPs, the intellectual property rights, we say that the data is restricted. Okay. The next question talks about data analysis. In which category do we put a categorical data? So again, a very simple and a direct question that is there. So which data analysis would consider a categorical data? So right, you, uh, you have Nikita has the right answer. So it's qualitative when I'm saying the data is either continuous or discrete. I'm classifying that under a quantitative head. However, when I'm saying the data is categorical, it could be good, bad. It could be a kind of series where I'm trying to classify data under different categories. That is a qualitative data analysis so very very important where do we use quantitative data analysis and qualitative data analysis similarly the source of data are also very very important the next question deals with the very basics of statistics so uh, looking for the correct answer now every week again we have one class on the statistics coming up and also we have uh, one class of ncrt's coming up every week so Every weekly schedule is up in the community. So if you are subscribed, you would be able to know what is forthcoming for the next week at exam race. Okay. Now the next question here 
looking for the correct answer so i have uh, the right answers that are uh, um, already there yes money these lectures are useful for your preparation of psc exams as well now here the standard deviation refers to the distribution of the responses according to the mean so definitely yes so that's how we understand the standard deviation we uh, calculate it from the difference with the mean and that's what is the basis of standard deviation the regression analysis is the relation between the variables of interest so that's again correct because we are trying to uh, perform the regression analysis for understanding uh, let's say you have the information uh, how we can uh, extrapolate it or how we can progress forward with the given data so therefore that is how we understand the regression analysis so both the statements come true here the next question is again based on the qualitative data collection so which of this is a qualitative data collection which is performed on the same data source but for a prolonged period of time so again a very very important important questions uh, thanks swati so definitely we are trying to bring in some of the best questions so uh, from our side we do not commit that these questions would be part of your nt examination but definitely we are bringing you the best practice materials uh, so you have a lot of correct answers with gurveen sakshi uh, priyanka wonder studio and more so the ra the right answer here is longitudinal study so under a longitudinal study on the same data source you understand it over a extended period of time however cross sectional is across uh, on the same time period okay and that's the basic basic difference that we have between a cross sectional study and a longitudinal study now most of the qualitative studies that you do are longitudinal in nature and as i said this whole data collection is very close to your research so students who have already qualified net are struggling with your phd how to write a synopsis how to uh, prepare for uh, the viva and so on so we would be bringing a huge lot of series for your phd how to write a synopsis writing a research proposal talking about the literature review and all those in the coming sessions so stay tuned and next tuesday we would meet again with the next topic topic which is communication have a wonderful day till then